Hey there, welcome to another devlog for Toaster Defense, the platforming tower defense game where you must protect the toaster at all cost. I'm Woots, and thank you for joining me on this devlog. I have a lot of new things since the last devlog, including some new enemies, which I'm really excited to show off. So I want to get you caught up on the game's current progress. W-O-O-T-S. Woots. First, I want to show you two new enemies for the game. Let's start out by talking about the new drill enemy. If you've seen past devlogs, you may remember the blue enemy with the buzzsaw in its head. That character was actually a recolor of the normal walking enemy, but was a placeholder for the time being. The buzzsaw enemy has been completely reworked and is now the drill enemy. As usual, once I designed, modeled, and animated the enemy, it took a little bit of extra programming to get it functioning correctly, and let me explain why. Yes, I used all the scripts from the normal walking enemy since they function the same way. However, the difference is that the player cannot jump on this enemy, nor can it dash through the drill portion of the body. Therefore, I had to create an extra script for the drill so that if the player would dash through the drill, it would override the invincibility frames and deal damage. Speaking of damage, I changed the health system in the game to have hearts instead of dying upon impact with an enemy. It completely changed the flow of the game and it feels a whole lot smoother. If you take a glance on the top left corner of the game, you will see that I completely changed the UI to correspond with this change. I just wanted to quickly touch on that really fast, but while I'm here, if you want to learn more about game development, be sure to subscribe to the channel and smack the living crap out of that bell, just for fun. I'm trying to get to 100 uh, million billion subscribers by the end of the video, so anything you can do helps, and I really appreciate it. Now let's get back to the enemies. The other enemy is this awesome spider-like robot with a freaking giant bomb on his head, which I've been calling the crawler. The concept of this enemy is that it would walk down the walls to get to the toaster. The idea was to make it so that there was finally an enemy taking a different path other than funneling down the level like the rest of the enemies and prevent the player from camping on the bottom in the corners. I learned a lot of new things with this enemy, such as paths and procedural animation, which is really freaking cool. For the paths, I watched this video on how to use splines by CodeMonkey and applied it to toaster defense. In the video, CodeMonkey shows how to connect an object to a path and keep it going around said path. But in my game, I needed to have multiple paths and have a crawler spawn on the different paths. To achieve this, I created four paths, and for each path, created a trigger at its corresponding spawn point. Doing this would snap the crawler to its respective path, and I actually did this on stream right here on the channel. So again, if you want to learn more about game development, please subscribe so you don't miss the next stream. As for the procedural animation, I followed this tutorial by Leo Chaumartin that led me to create procedural animation. After some adjustments, of course. After that, I just needed to plug in the rest of the enemy scripts and add in an animation for the enemy to explode when it reaches the toaster. With that said, of course I would love to hear what you think of our two new enemies in the comments below. Before we end the devlog, I want to quickly talk about a couple more things such as the new menus for toaster defense. For a while, I just had the kitchen level in the game, but as I slowly approach the second playtesting phase, I realized that I needed to have a complete cycle to the game. First, I started off with zazzing up the pause menu. That design for the buttons and the banner pretty much stuck for the style of how the menus would look in the game. Once I had that all worked out, I needed to set up a main menu. I drew up some concepts for the menu, and once I decided on which direction I wanted to take, I started to act upon that design. Right from the title screen, I wanted a story to be told with this toaster and toaster oven that are in love and give a reason to the player why to protect her. It may sound a bit cheesy, but hey, I think it's cute. On the main menu, you'll also see a customized menu, which is in the plans for the future, as well as a settings menu, which took a little bit of time to set up correctly. After following a tutorial by the always great Brackies, 
it gave me the foundation I needed to get started on the rest of the settings menu. Now, the player can change the resolution of the size of the game based off their monitor, full screen the game, and adjust the music and the sound effects, which I ended up using the player prefs for the volume settings so it will carry over flawlessly throughout the game. I also spent some time programming the function so that the game will know which input the player is using, whether it's keyboard or controller. Depending on what controller the player is currently using, there will be some slight changes in the game, but it's just to change certain UI elements for the player, such as controls. Well, you're all caught up now, and that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up, and if you want to learn more about game development, please be sure to subscribe. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next video.